ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عسى ربه ان طلقكن ان يبدله ازواجا خيرا منكن مسلمات مؤمنات مؤمنات قانتات تائبات عابدات سائحات ثيبات وابكارا وقال النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم اي امراه ماتت وزوجها عنها راض دخلت الجنه او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام honorable ulama ikram respected brothers and elders allah rabbul izzat has made the pinnacle of joy happiness and ecstasy jannatul firdaus the height of jubilation and happiness will be jannatul firdaus and one of the greatest highlights of jannat undoubtedly is the women the damsels and the maidens of jannah at times allah referred to them by saying qasiratut tarf modest in their gaze khayratun hisan striking in their appearance sublime in their character hurum maqsuratun fil khiyam well guarded in their pavilions inna ansha'nahunna insha'a we divinely created them fajalnahunna abkara uruban atraban li ashab al-yamin they haven't been touched by any human walahum fiha azwajun mutahhara women that are pure from every form of filth and impurity ka amsal al-lu'lu' al-maknun like hidden pearls nabiy alayhi salatu wassalam says in the riwayat of bukhari wala nasifuha ala ra'siha khayrun min ad-dunya wa ma fiha never mind the beauty of that woman or her head or her face the scarf on the head of the maiden of jannah is more attractive than this world and its entirety and in the riwayat of targhib nabiy alayhi salam said law anna bananan min bananiha bada لو ان بنانا من بنانها بدا لغلب ضوءه ضوء الشمس if her fingertip has to be exposed in this world undoubtedly nature has instilled attraction and beauty in every limb of a woman's body and hence islam advocates to my sister to conceal herself the western world has converted every limb of the woman's body into an object of advertisement just not the shape or the figure of a woman but every limb her hair to promote shampoo her, her fingers to promote some some uh, uh, some cream that is approved by the dermatologists her feet to to promote some form of shoe every limb on the body of a woman is used as an object of advertisement nabi alayhi salam says if her fingertip has to be exposed in this world la ghalaba dawuhu daw ash-shams the brilliance of that fingertip will outshine the sun also this is the words of nabi alayhi salatu wassalam under the commentary of this ayah ka'annahunna al-yaqut wal-marjan ka'annahunna al-yaqut wal-marjan Allah says perhaps the closest that you may understand oh human the description of the woman that I have prepared for you provided you bring modesty in your gaze if I was to liken it to any material thing ka'annahunna al-yaqut they are like rubies nay they are like coral fa bi ayyi ala'i rabbikuma tukadhiban the women of jannah will congregate and then in a melodious song they will sing a song ala wa nahnu al-khalidatu fala namutu abada wa nahnu ar-radiyatu fala nasqatu abada ونحن الناعمات فلا نبأس ابدا ونحن المقيمات فلا نرحل ابدا طوبى لمن كان لنا وكنا له الا ونحن الخالدات we are here for eternity we will never die ونحن الناعمات we remain young and attractive we will never age ونحن الراضيات we are perpetually happy with our husbands we will never become angry or sad or displeased with them ونحن المقيمات and we are stationed here we will never abandon them طوبان لمن كان لنا وكنا له fortunate, fortunate are those men who will sit in our laps and fortunate are we to whom we to, to those men to whom we belong when the women of jannah the hours the maidens the damsels of paradise will sing the song then the women of this world will reply the women of this world will reply allah has given the women of this world both the opportunity and the potential of excelling even the women of jannah What will the woman of this world reply by saying ala wa nahnu al musalliyat wa ma sallaytunna wa nahnu al mutawaddiat wa ma tawaddatunna wa nahnu as saimat wa ma sumtunna 
وَنَحْنُ الْمُتَصَدِّقَاتُ وَمَا تَصَدَّقْتُنَّ That listen, oh the woman of Jannah, perhaps you can elaborate on your beauty. You were divinely created by the will of Allah. We can tell you of a spiritual beauty which we have you never heard of. And that is we used to disturb our sleep and perform salah for the pleasure of Allah. You don't know what is salah. Allah wa nahnu al-mutawadhi'at. And for this salah we used to perform wudu. You don't understand the nature of ablution. Wa nahnu al-sa'imat. In the month of Ramadan, we women fasted. Our husbands were going to work. Our children were going to school. The food was in front of us. What stops that Muslim woman from not eating other than the fear of Allah? Allah wa nahnu sa'imatu wa ma sumtunna. We observe fast in the month of Ramadan. Allah wa nahnu al-mutasaddiqatu wa ma tasaddaqtunna. The little money that came to us, we gave charity in the path of Allah. You don't know what is charity. Aisha radiyallahu anha says, on the grounds of these four qualities, فَغَلَبْنَهُنَّ وَاللَّهُ the women of this world will dominate over the whores of Jannah. On the grounds of these qualities, the first being Salah, the second being fasting, provided they have the qualities in them. It is unfortunate so many women are negligent. So many women are negligent with regards to the Qadha fast. In the month of Ramadan, of course, when she goes through a menstrual cycle, she cannot fast. But those qaza are imperative, that rests upon her shoulder. Many women delay that fast for months, if not years. وَنَحْنُ الْمُتَصَدِّقَاتِ And we gave charity. Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam says, إِذَا أَنْفَقَتِ الْمَرْأَةُ مِنْ بَيْتِ زَوْجِهَا When a woman will give charity from the earnings of her husband. Look at the kindness of Islam. When a woman will give charity from the earnings of her husband, Allah will give her the same reward like her husband. In the riwayat of Bukhari Sharif, on the day of Eid, the Nabi of Allah, after returning from the Eidgah, he addresses the assembly of women. He tells them to gather in one place, and then behind a veil, he addresses them. And he says, Ya ma'ashara nisa tasaddaqna. Oh, the group of women make charity a common practice. Walaw min huliyyikunna. Even if you have nothing other than jewelry, give it in the path of Allah. Bilal radiallahu anhu puts out the cloth. He says women took out their jewelry, their earrings, their bracelets, their rings, and they gave everything in the path of Allah. Aisha radiallahu anha was such a charitable woman. Muhammad ibn Munkadir, a very great tabi'i, one day came to Aisha radiallahu anha and he asked her for some money. Aisha radiallahu anha said, I have nothing, but you know, you're such a pious person. Believe me, if I had, I would have given you, and even if I had 10,000 dirhams, I would have given it to you, but I have absolutely nothing. Few minutes passed, the sahabi by the name of Khalid ibn Asad radiallahu anhu comes, he says, oh my respected mother Aisha, this is a humble gift from my side here, is 10,000 dirhams. Aisha radiallahu anha pauses and she says, it seems that Allah has put my words to test. Allah has put my, one is you and I, unsubstantiated claims, loose, you know, just, just, just to utter it, with, with, with no backing, no support to what we say. She says, go and call Muhammad ibn Munkadir. He is brought, Aisha radiallahu anha says, I had committed that if I had, I would have given you, year is 10,000 dirhams. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-mar'atu idha sallat khamsaha, wa saamat shahraha, when a woman will perform her five daily salah. How many women at this time of Jummah unfortunately are loitering around? Our sisters are not even performing the first salah of Dhuhr. What will be the condition of this woman on the day of Qiyamah? And she will observe the fast in the month of Ramadan. And she will be obedient to her husband. And that is what I wish to explore today. Unfortunately, our thinking has also been dominated by Western ideals today. Under the pretext of empowering women, in droves, women have been driven out of the natural conducive environment of the house. They are brought into the commercial world. In the process, many women have forgotten the reward, may I add, the enormous reward that Allah has kept for her in serving her husband. Apart from the marital bliss, but the great reward that Allah has kept, when a woman is performing salah, she understands it's an act of ibadat. When a woman is making circumambulation of the Kaaba, she understands it's an act of ibadat. But the woman of today does not understand that when my husband returns from a vulnerable environment of nudity, if I adorn myself, I decorate myself, I use good forms of deodorants to attract my, my, my husband and to bring modesty in my husband, I swear by Allah standing on this mimbar, I can tell you that will earn a greater reward than long rakats of nafil and tahajjud. But the woman of today is not conscious about this year. In the same breath, when she, when she uh, omits this duty and she's negligent in this regard, she fails to comprehend the severity of disobeying Allah in this regard. Nabi alayhi salam says, La'ana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-musawwifat. Nabi alayhi salam curse musawwifat. Sahaba said, who is musawwifat? Nabi alayhi salam said, Allati yad'uha zawjuha. 
The husband comes home, he tells his wife, come away immediately in the room, I have a need for you. The wife says, sofa, sofa, I'm coming, I'm coming. Hatta taghlibahu aina, until the tired man who was exhausted and was vulnerable, he's so overpowered by fatigue that he falls off to sleep. Nabi alayhi salam has cursed this woman. Understand the priority. A'zamun nasi haqqan ala rajul the right of Jamal Fawaid, Nabi alayhi salam says the greatest obligation on a man is to his mother. And the greatest obligation on a woman is to her husband. When the Nabi of Allah used to return from jihad, an environment which is conducive to deen, everybody is suppressing their ego. But what was the wonderful practice of Nabi alayhi salam? He would never make a sudden presence at home. He would halt outside Medina, then he would send the children that go into Medina, and inform all those women whose husbands are out in the path of Allah that tomorrow at this time the caravan must be returning in the riwayat of Bukhari. Why, O oh Nabi of Allah? لِكَيْ تَمْ تَشِطَ سَعِثَ وَتَسْتَحِدَّ الْمَغِيبَ So that the disheveled, untidy woman uh, adorns herself, removes unwanted hair, and when her husband returns, she presents herself. The Nabi of Allah takes this into cognizance. He sends Umm Sulaim radiallahu anha with a proposal to another woman. Nabi alayhi salam says, when you come to this woman that I intend getting married to her, the wife comes in mustadrak and bayhaqi. If you happen to come close to her, then have a look at the cleanliness of that woman. Shummi awa ridaha. And if the opportunity presents, smell the mouth of this woman. I want to know how conscious she is about, uh, about oral hygiene. These are the wonderful teachings of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But it's unfortunate that today the woman is, is, is negligent and oblivious about the great reward that Allah has kept for her. Aisha radiallahu anha said, لَوْ تَعْلَمْنَا بِحَقِّ أَزْوَاجِ كُنَّا عَلَيْ كُنَّا لَجَعَلَتِ الْمَرْأَةُ مِنْ كُنَّا تَمْسَحُ الْغُبَارْ عَنْ قَدَمِي زَوْجِهَا بِخَدِّهَا I swear by Allah, oh, the group of women, if you only knew the obligation you have to your husbands, you would have wiped the dust beneath his feet with the cheeks of your face. And what did the Nabi of Allah say? أَيُّمَمْ رَأَةٍ مَاتَتْ وَزَوْجُهَا عَنْهَا رَاذٍ دَخَلَتِ الْجَنَّةِ That woman who dies in a condition that her husband is pleased with her, she goes direct into Jannah. The description, one ordinary Arab Bedouin speaks about the beauty of a woman and speaks about the flaws of a woman in, in, in uh, you know, poetry, very beautiful. He says, The beauty of a woman who seems to be the tallest when she stands. And the most outstanding when she sits. And the most honest when she speaks. When she becomes angry, she subdues her anger. She subdues her anger. In the riwayat of Targhib, Nabi alayhi salam said, Ala ukhbirukum bi rijalikum min ahli al-jannah. Oh my sahaba, should I tell you about the men from amongst you who will go to jannah? Sahaba said, tell us please, O Nabi of Allah. Nabi alayhi salam said, An nabiyu fil jannah, every prophet will be in jannah. Was siddiqu fil jannah, and every truthful person will be in jannah. Was shaheedu fil jannah, and every martyr will be in jannah. Wal walud fil jannah. And the child who passes away before the age of puberty will be in Jannah. وَالرَّجُلُ يَزُورُ أَخَاهُ فِي نَاحِيَةِ الْمِصْرِ لَا يَزُورُهُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ فِي الْجَنَّةِ And a person who travels to go and meet his Muslim brother for the pleasure of Allah, he will also be in Jannah. Then Nabi alayhi salam said, and do you want to know which woman will be in Jannah? Sahaba said, tell us, O Nabi of Allah. Nabi alayhi salam said, Al-Wadood. That woman who gives off tremendous love to her husband. Al-Walood who is fertile and can bear a lot of children. إِذَا غَذِي But when she becomes angry. أَوْ أُسِيْءَ إِلَيْهَا Or her husband ill-treats her. أَوْ غَذِي بَزَوْجُهَا Of course, we are not for a moment suggesting that a woman must become a victim of an abuse relation. I can potentially see a woman asking me, Molana, but you've only spoken about one side. That is not what I'm trying to stress upon. What I am getting at is that, oh my sister, understand with little wisdom and tenderness on your part. It would bring prosperity and bliss in your home. And look at the broader picture of Jannah on this patience. Look at the broader picture. Nabi alayhi salam says, Oh, ghadiba zawjuha. Oh, her husband becomes angry. She comes to her husband, the rewayat of Targhib. Yadi fi yadik. Oh, my beloved, let me put my hand in your hand. La aktahilu bi ghamzin hatta tarda. I will not sleep until you do not forgive me. I will not sleep until you do not forgive me. There's a beautiful incident written in the kitab. Often we have a situation, brothers, as far as men are concerned, the minimum I can implore, I think it is exceptionally mean for a man to physically abuse his wife. There's absolutely no grounds and no justification, regardless of the provocation from the respective partner. Both should be at ease that there will be no physical abuse in this relation. Khalid ibn Yazid says, one day I was sitting 
And I made a nasty comment regarding my wife's brother. I just said something because myself and him were not on very good terms. Now this happens often. And my wife Ramla was sitting next to me. So after a little while I looked at my wife and I said, you got no comment, does it mean you agree or you disagree? After all it's your brother, what's your take on it? So subhanallah, now look at wisdom from a woman. Look at wisdom from a woman. One is, you know, to start when, when he makes a nasty comment about your family, you start making nasty comments about his family. One is just to politely say, my husband, I'm asking forgiveness on behalf of my brother. I'm asking forgiveness. What did this woman say? And let this be a role model for my sisters. What did she say? Allahu Akbar. لا هذا ولا ذاك ولكن المرأة لم تخلق للدخول بين الرجال No, my husband, it's not a matter that I've agreed with what you said, nor have I disagreed. Actually, women haven't been created to interfere in the matters of men. إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ رِيَاحِينٌ لِلظَّمِّ وَالشَّمِّ We are actually fragrant flowers that have to be smelt and admired. فَمَا لَنَا وَلِدْدُخُولْ بَيْنَكُمْ Why should I bother in your matters? He says, when my wife gave me that answer, a man is not a slave to a beautiful face, but I swear by Allah, he's a slave to an obedient wife. And that is the beauty of a woman. بَلِ الْجَمِيلَةُ الَّتِي كُلَّمَا كَرَّرْتَ بَصَرَكَ فِي زَادَتْكَ فِيهَا حُسْنَا The beauty of a woman is that every time you glance at her, it enhances her beauty. And that is the, the abode she has to secure in the heart of her husband. When he heard this, he stood up, he kissed his wife and he apologized. And he said, oh my beloved, from today onwards, I will never offend you. What did the poet say? الْمَرْأَةُ الْعَاقِلَةُ تَبْنِي بَيْتَهَا an intelligent woman builds a ruined home. وَالسَّفِيهَةُ تَهْدِمُهَا And a foolish woman destroys a built home. They say a man is incomplete until he is married. And then if he has a wonderful wife, then he's completed. And if he has a foolish wife, then he's finished. A man is incomplete until he is married. If he has a wonderful wife, then he's completed. But if he has the wrong wife, then he is finished. Umm Salma radiallahu look at the foresight of a woman. Let me explain to you what, what is the potential a woman can do. So what does he say? Alladhi idha ghadibat halamat. When she becomes angry, she subdues her anger. anger. Wa idha dhahikat tabassamat. Instead of laughing, she smiles. Wa idha asna'at shay'an jawwadat. When she does something, she does it thoroughly and correctly. Alladhi tuti'u zawjaha. She obeys her husband. Hakim Tirmizi has made mention of a riwayat which even Imam Suyuti has made mention of it in Durri Mansur. In Talaqa Ghazi and one person went out in jihad. وَأَوْصَى إِمْرَأَتَهُ أَلَّا تَنْزِلْ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ He told his wife, you don't come downstairs. Her father was just living downstairs. He said, you stay there, this is my command to you. The husband goes out in the path of Allah. Now in western circles, you don't deserve this. You must speak about it. How can you live in such an oppressive relation? And unfortunately, this is what we are doing. But then look at what they have to offer to you. They have to offer to you that you become an object of advertisement. And every man with loose moral comes and uses you and abuses you. That is what the world have. The man is gone out in jihad. Her father becomes, this, this person's father-in-law becomes sick. So the wife writes to Nabi alayhi salam, sends a message that my father is very sick and my husband gave me strict commands that I must not leave the house. Nabi alayhi salam said, اِتَّقِ اللَّهَ وَأَتِيعِ زَوْجَكِ Fear Allah and obey your husband. The father passes away. Again, now the wife is in a dilemma. Do I come downstairs, pay the respect, see my father off on his way to the grave? But this is the directives of my, my respected husband. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam sends a message to her. They tell her to fear Allah and obey her husband. He himself comes forward, performs the janazah of that woman, of that sahabi, lowers him into the grave, and then he sends a message to that woman that tell her, Inna Allah qad ghafar li abiha bi tawa'iyatiha li zawjiha. That tell her Allah has forgiven her father because of her obedience to her husband. Allati tuti'u zawjaha, who obeys her husband, tilzimu baytaha, by her nature she loves staying indoors. Furthermore, تَلْزِمُ بَيْتَهَا الْعَزِيزَةُ فِي نَفْسِهَا الْذَلِيلَةُ فِي قَوْمِهَا She is honorable in her nation and she humbles herself with her husband. الْوَدُود الْوَلُود She gives lots of love to her husband. وَكُلُّ أَمْرِهَا مَحْمُود Nay, every matter of hers is praiseworthy. إِنْ رَأَتْ خَيْرًا حَمِدَتْ If she sees good, she speaks about it. وَإِنْ رَأَتْ شَرًّا قَالَتْ كُلُّ الرِّجَالِ كَذَا And if she sees some flaw in her husband, she says it's okay, all men are like this. If she sees some flaw in her, in her husband, what does she say? It is okay, all men are like this. Let me explain to you brothers, what a healthy relation an obedient wife can do, how it can empower a man, and how it can make a man more productive in society. Perhaps you heard the name, if not let me tell you, of Qadi Shuray. 
He was one of the greatest chief justice in the annals of Islamic history. He hailed from Yemen. His father's name was Harith. He came from the tribe called Kinda. He lived up to the age of 107. He was appointed as the chief justice of Medina by none other than Umar radiallahu anhu. And throughout the period of Umar, Uthman, Ali, Muawiyah and the Banu Umayyah, he remained the chief justice. Scholars have written amongst the wisdom of his prosperity was the loyal wife that he had, the faithful wife that he had. Subhanallah. Imam Shabi says, I met Qadi Shuray. I asked him, how's things at home? He says, my brother, I do not want to flatter and praise my wife, but Alhamdulillah, min ushreen aaman, lam arama yughzibuni min ahli. 20 years I'm married, I haven't seen one thing from my wife that upsetted me. What were those women? We can't even say 20 days. Min ushreen aaman, lam arama yughzibuni min ahli. For 20 years, for 20 years, not once my wife upset. He says, what do you mean? He says, min awwali laylatin lamma dakhaltu alam ra'ati. The first night when I met with my wife in seclusion, رَأَيْتُ فِيهَا حُسْنًا فَاتِنًا وَجَمَالًا نَادِرًا I found her to be exceptionally beautiful. And this again, my brother, if you want to see the beauty in your wife, then wash your eyes, not with solo liquid, but with modesty and bashfulness. Then you will see the beauty Allah has put in your partner. He says, I looked at my wife, I said, Ya Allah, what beauty. I have to read Turaqat Namaz and thank Allah. Allah has put a need in me and He gave me such a beautiful wife. فَلَا أُطَهِّرْ نَفْسِي وَأُصَلِّي رَكْعَتَيْنِ شُكْرًا لِلَّهِ I'm going to perform two rakat namaz and thank Allah. فَلَمَّا سَلَّمْتُ When I completed my salah, وَجَدْتُ زَوْجَتِي تُصَلِّي بِصَلَاتِي وَتُسَلِّمُ بِسَلَامِي I found my wife also ending her salah, and she also made salah with me and salam with me. فَلَمَّا خَلَى الْبَيْتِ مِنَ الْأَصْحَابِ وَالْأَقَارِبِ When friends and relatives had left, yeah, again today, this is the modesty of Islam. How sad in public view, in the hall, hugging, kissing, is taking place in front of everyone. Islam teaches us. Unfortunately, we have not honored the injunction of Islam. Apart from having separate accommodation, the Nabi of Allah says, لا تباشر المرأة المرأة فتنعتها لزوجها كأنه يندر إليها The riwayat of Abu Dawood. Let it not be that a woman meets with another woman. Now this happens often. The woman goes in her section, the man goes in his section. When they return, then the husband is asking, how is the bride? And the wife is asking, how was the groom? What does the Nabi of Allah say? Let it not be that a woman meets with another woman and then tells her husband, I met such a lovely woman. You mean lovely in character. Your husband has different understandings of lovely. فَتَنْعَتَهَا لِزَوْجِهَا And then he comes, she comes and she describes what a nice person from this family. As though he is looking, this will jeopardize that marriage. So what does he say? فَلَمَّا خَلَى When they left from the house. Qumtu, I stood up, madattu yadi nahwaha, I stretched my hand towards my wife. So she said, ala rislika ya aba umayya, wait, oh my husband, wait. You are the chief justice, but I need to speak to you. She comes forward in the bedroom where this seclusion, subhanallah. If this can become a reality and this can become the introduction and the beginning of our marriages, then you will see the likes of children that will come about. She sits before her husband, she says, alhamdulillah, ahmaduhu wa astainuhu wa usalli ala Muhammad. Oh my husband, give me five minutes. I praise and, and, and thank Allah. Durood and salawat on Nabi alayhi salam in seclusion in the room, in the room, in the bedroom. And then she says, إِنِّي مْرَأَةٌ غَرِيبَةٌ لَا عِلْمَ لِي بِأَخْلَاقِكِ Oh my husband, I'm an ordinary simple woman. I have no understanding of your personality. We are meeting for the first time. فَبَيِّنْ لِي مَا تُحِبُّ فَآتِيهِ وَمَا تَكْرَهُ فَأَكْرَهُ فَأَتْرُكُهُ How about telling me your likes so I can carry it out and your dislikes so that I can avoid it. فَبَرَلِي إِنَّهُ كَانَ فِي قَوْمِكْ مَنْ تَتَزَوَّجُهُ مِنْ نِسَائِكُمْ وَفِي قَوْمِ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ مَنْ هُوَ كَفٌّ لِي There were many women in your tribe you could have got married to, and there were many men that were compatible to me. But when Allah has decreed that we will be united, now we have to live together. وَقَدْ مَلَّكْتَنِي You have been made in charge with me. The only thing I can do is tell you, remind you of what Allah told you. إِمْسَاكُمْ بِمَعْرُوفْ أَوْ تَسْرِيهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ That keep your women folk with respect or release them with dignity. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ I say this and I end. He says, Imam Shabi, Qadi Shuray says, then I had to answer. I praised Allah. I said, oh my wife, you have said great words. If you live up to it, I will salute you. But if you go against it, then I will use this very text against you. Then my wife asked me, who do you like must come and visit? So I said, so and so people can come, so and so people can come. Then she asked me a very pertinent question. What did she say? كَيْفَ مَحَبَّتُكَ لِي زِيَارَةِ أَهْلِي What is your opinion for my relatives, my family, my parents to come? 
So he says, I was very bold and very frank to her. I said, Ma uhibbu an yamullani ashari. I don't want my in-laws to visit me so much that they tire me. He says, I lived with her for 20 years. Wallah, not once did she upset me. Once I said something and I was also guilty of it, it was because of my own wrong. So when a woman can have the correct understanding, instead of provoking, instead of in fact, Islam teaches us that when a woman speaks to her husband, she should not address him by his name. Abu Darda radiallahu's wife, whenever he spoke, whenever she spoke about her husband, she said, my leader, my spiritual mentor. And the Quran also refers to the husband as Sayyid. Wa alfa ya Sayyidaha lad al bab. Zainab radiallahu anha, the daughter of Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. She secured such love in the heart of her husband that before he accepted Islam, Abu al-As ibn Rabi, someone came and told him, divorce your wife, we will give you the most beautiful woman of the Quraysh. What did he say? مَا أُحِبُّ أَنَّ لِي بِهَا إِمْرَأَةً مِّن Quraysh. I am not prepared to have my wife being substituted by the most beautiful woman. وَإِنَّكَ تَعْلَمْ أَلَّا طَاقَةَ لِي بِأَنْ أُفَارِقَهَا I cannot even imagine the thought of separating. This is the love she had. What did the Nabi of Allah say regarding Khadija? آمَنَتْ بِي إِذْ كَفَرَنِي النَّاسِ she, Nabi alayhi salam says, she brought iman on me when people denied me. وَصَدَّقَتْنِي إِذْ كَذَّبَنِي النَّاسِ She trusted me when people belied me. وَوَاسَتْنِي بِمَالِهَا Again, very important. She gave me financial support. They say a successful man is one who can earn more than his wife spends. And a successful woman is one who can find such a man. <laughs> a successful man, this person, he lost his credit card. After that, he located the thug. So he, you know, reprimanded him, but he left his credit card with him. He say, why? He say, no, he spends less than my wife. وَوَاسَتْنِي بِمَالِهَا إِذْ حَرَمَنِي النَّاسِ And she gave me financial support when people deprived me. And this is another quality of beauty in a woman. I haven't even spoken of quarter of my topic, what I actually wanted to explore. This is just the bare minimum of, of the beauty of a woman. Sayyidina Mu'az radiallahu anhu said, إِنَّكُمْ أُبْتُلِيتُمْ بِالذَّرَّاءِ فَصَبَرْتُمْ you were tested with difficulty and you endured. وَإِنِّي أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ فِتْنَةِ السَّرَّى But I fear the error and the fitna of prosperity. Then he asked him, do you know what I mean by prosperity, the fitna of prosperity? وَهِيَ النِّسَاء إِذَا تَحَلَّيْنَ بِالذَّهَبِ وَلَبِسْنَ رِيطَ الشَّامِ وَلَبِسْنَ رِيطَ الشَّامِ وَعَسْبَ الْيَمَنِ فَأَتْعَبْنَ الْغَنِيَّ وَكَلَّفْنَ الْفَقِيرَ مَا لَا يُطَاد I am referring to those women who insist on dressing with the fine garments of Sham and wearing the crowns of Yemen and adorning themselves with jewelry. They tire the wealthy husband from spending on them. And they burden the innocent husband with that which is beyond his ability. What did the Nabi of Allah say? And let me leave you with these words. This should be uh, the guidelines regarding Khadija radiallahu anha. Nabi alayhi salam said, the noblest of women, khayruhunna aysaruhunna sadaqa. That woman who has the minimum amount of dowry, she is the best of women. The rewrite of Kanzul Ummal, Nabi alayhi salam says, min yumni al-mar'a, the signs of a blessed woman, an tatayassara khitbatuha, that her proposal comes early. Wa an yatayassara sadaquha, and her dowry is minimum. Wa an yatayassara rahimuha, and soon after marriage she gives birth to a child. Nabi alayhi salam says these are the signs of a good woman, a blessed woman. The couplets with which I leave you: la zawjatun muti'atun, la zawjatun muti'atun aynuka anha radiya. That obedient wife which is striking to the eye. Listen to this here. لَزَوْجَةٌ مُطِيعَةٌ عَيْنُكَ عَنْهَا رَاضِيَةٌ That obedient wife which is striking to the eye. وَتِفْلَةٌ صَغِيرَةٌ مَحْفُوفَةٌ بِالْعَافِيَةٌ And that healthy, well-kept, innocent child. وَغُرْفَةٌ نَظِيفَةٌ نَفْسُكَ فِيهَا هَانِيَةٌ And that clean and tidy environment in which you may relax, unwind and take out the stress of the day. وَلُقْمَةٌ لَذِيذَةٌ مِنْ يَدٍ أَغْلَى طَاهِيَةٌ and that meal which has been prepared by precious hands. خَيْرٌ مِّنَ السَّاعَاتِ فِي ذِلِّ الْقُصُورِ الْعَالِيَةِ is better than spending moments, if not days, in the most exclusive hotel with the most scenic view. May Allah Ta'ala make our women understand the great reward that Allah has kept for them. And may Allah make us as good husbands also, not to taunt one another. Khalif Harun al-Rashid told his wife, I'm a just ruler. The hadith says, just rulers will be in Jannah. She says, you're a just ruler, innaka zalimun asil. You're a transgressor and an oppressor. You've got two reasons to be in Jahannam and no reason to be in Jannah. Now this is often this provocations happen. He was calm. He sent a message to Imam Muhammad. He says, this is what my wife is saying. 
Imam Muhammad asked him one question. When you disobey Allah, do you fear Allah? He says, yes. He says, then tell your wife, I'm telling you, you don't have one jannat, you have two jannats. وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ May Allah inspire us with mutual understanding, take our marriages to prosperity, and let death separate us and not talaq. وَآخِرُ الدَّعْوَانَ عَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ